What's up guys, it's Average Joel, making average content for the average viewer, and today I have a special one for you. Something a bit different from my channel, but hopefully you will find some value and take away some very solid advice. So it's the new year, 2020, and loads of people have given themselves New Year's resolutions. Slightly chubbier people may have told themselves that they are going to stop eating all of the bloody pies. Long distance truck drivers might have promised to stop accidentally stumbling across notorious dogging hotspots, and 20-something nerdy gaming enthusiasts who can only manage to grow facial hair on their throat may have decided that they would like to take their video game hobby, which is bordering on becoming an obsession, and turn it into some something more productive by starting a YouTube channel. Now, before we go on, I will just say that I am by no means an expert in this field. I started my channel a little over five months ago, and at the time of me recording this, I have about 640 subscribers. So I'm not doing too bad at all, but I obviously have a very long way to go. But the thing is, I have done something that a lot of people who want to become YouTubers really struggle to do. And the secret to becoming a YouTuber is simple. It's saying the word yeet and the phrase let's go completely unironically. No, I'm just kidding. I would never say either of those. The thing that I have done that has really helped me the most is upload my first video. And for me, that was by far the hardest thing to do. I didn't know if people who I knew from school would take the piss out of me, and I didn't know if I would fail and crash and burn. But the thing is, without taking that leap of faith, I would have never known. Now when I started making content, I obviously went through YouTube watching all of these YouTube gurus, with their clickbait titles saying that I could get a thousand subscribers in just two weeks, and all of them talking about thumbnails and click-through rates and yada yada yada, but the problem was I couldn't find any videos that were made by gaming YouTubers for gaming YouTubers. So I thought, why not ask some of my favourite YouTubers of varying sizes what their absolute best advice would be for a budding young content creator. Before we go on, it'd be great if you guys would comment down below the name of a YouTuber that you really enjoy but who has less than a thousand subscribers and we'll see if we can help them grow. Also, if you're new around these parts then it would be awesome if you'd subscribe. So, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to a YouTuber that has personally helped me a lot through my journey. He's a very articulate chap and boasts a channel of over 30,000 subscribers. What advice would you give, Get Good Guy? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Get Good Guy, and uh, you know I'm here today, the same as everybody else, but I reckon most of this video, and probably most videos like this, are talking about things that you should do when you want to start a channel on YouTube. And, uh, and that's good, that's really useful, but I wanted to do the flip side. I want to tell you some things not to do, and I'm going to be very open and base them on my, my own experiences and habits. Because although at this stage I have a channel with 30... 2, 33, I don't even know, actually, 33,000 subscribers, which is solid, and of course I know a lot of people would like to have that. There's also lots of reasons why I get told I should have more subscribers, and people go, oh, I expect you to have more based on what I'm watching, and that's based on purely my own mistakes. So, please do not trap yourself within content if the subject matter isn't particularly successful just because you're scared of the outcome that comes after it. I am now having to battle through that. I am now having to spread myself away from, personally, just Battlefield, because Battlefield 5 isn't very successful, and I've just kind of pigeonholed myself within that in terms of my viewership and the YouTube algorithm. Try to avoid that. Add variety when you can. Try new things. Don't be afraid to have flop videos. When you have videos that don't get many views, so be it. You have to try things sometimes to find out what works and to not cause yourself to suffer in the long term. Also, please make sure you are making what you enjoy. I can also link this back to myself again. I've been making Battlefield 5 for such a long time. I don't play the game much for fun and yet I'm still making so much content on it. Make sure you're enjoying what you make. Your audience will notice and you will get burnt out if you don't change it. And then I want to keep this kind of brief. I, I guess I'll make it my three big things. My third one is don't focus too much on the numbers. Yes, you do need certain numbers to make a living from doing YouTube. And yes, getting big numbers is good, it's great, it feels good, it's encouraging, it's motivating. But sometimes things aren't as good, and sometimes you can't affect that particularly. Whether it's because you needed a break, whether it's because you couldn't upload as much as you needed to, whether it's because the algorithm shifted, or whether it's seasonal, like after Christmas, etc., maybe not as many people are watching YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Don't get yourself too down about it, just keep going. At some point, if you do the right things, it will pick up again. 
again. So those are my three things not to do when making and running a channel, and then in turn you can do the right things. Like produce content regularly, be consistent, find what makes you different, brand it well, your thumbnails, your titles, etc, and stand out. I hope that helps you. I've been Get Good Guy, and tell your mom to give me a call. Thanks, mate. A lot of good stuff there to think about. I think the last point you raised about not getting bogged down in the numbers is particularly poignant. I found that a couple of times I have worked my absolute arse off on a video and got really excited about it only to see it flop worse than a novice porn star in his first gilf scene. And yeah, it can be super discouraging and disappointing, but I think it's important to remember that when it comes to YouTube, you are made 100% by your successes and not by your failures. Unless, of course, you film a suicide victim in Japan. That shit will stick with you. Now next up, we have another smaller YouTuber that I've been growing in tandem with in my YouTube womb. We both started at similar point and both covered the same game, but since then have moved away from our original niches. He has had some great ideas and has some videos that have really pushed out beyond his subscriber base. Couple that with the fact that he has the voice that is smoother than a stripper's ass and you know that this guy is going places. What advice would you give, Jaws? I'll take it from here, Average, and I greatly appreciate the opportunity. It's slightly above average for you. Now, for you guys out there looking to start on YouTube or have just started, it may be like a virgin going into a bar for the first time. You arrive wide-eyed and ready to get lucky, but things turn out to be harder than you think, and you're just struggling to land your first shot. Well, don't worry. Everyone in this video has been there at one point or another, literally. Now, there are numerous ways to land that majestic gazelle that is a subscriber, and each channel will be better at some things than others will be, which is fine. Everyone has their niche, and it is important to find yours. Now, before you go digging in your pants to find a niche, I suggest looking at your content instead and seeing what is done well for you, or if you're just starting, I would say try out several things and see what does the best. For instance, me and Average here both started out doing mainly Battlefield. In fact, our first collab was about Battlefield, but now our content has taken different paths due to us finding different niches that worked well for our channels. For him, it has been Call of Duty, and for me, it is Assassin's Creed. And that's fine because that is what works for us. You may want to do one thing and end up doing another, and that's fine. As long as you enjoy it and you want to do it, then keep doing it. Now. How did I find my niche? Well, I discovered something called SEO, and I don't know what it stands for, it's just a thing. But essentially what it is, I can tell you. And that is how well your content will rank on YouTube and on Google. In order to drive traffic, you will want your title and tags to rank highly on these sites so that you will have more eyes seeing them. So you'll want to make videos on subjects that will have low competition and a higher search volume. This way, these eyes that are looking for that type of content will find it more easily and it will be your content and thus you'll have more majestic subscribers on your channel. Yeah, and I think that that is super important to note, mate. The amount of times that I have made videos that I thought were super relevant and were gonna pull thousands of views, but in the end, didn't gain any way near the amount of traction I wanted because I didn't realize that I was making a video on something that was way too competitive. Unfortunately, until you get a bigger following and have a bit more clout on the platform, you will find much more success going for video topics that have much less competition. So moving on, the last chap that I wanted to speak to you guys has sent me his advice all the way from Swindon. I hear they have a really nice Debenhams there actually. Wait. Sorry, what? Oh shit. Oh shit. So, sorry, I actually got that wrong. He's a... Uh, He's actually from Sweden. That explains the meatballs. Now the reason I wanted this chap to share his thoughts with you was because where Get Good Guy Jaws and myself all script our videos, Fabian has a different style completely and all of his videos are a lot more off the cuff. So, what have you got to share with us, mate? What up gamers? Fabian Chilis here, professional advisor everyone. To be fair, before we go into this you probably shouldn't listen to my advice. But anyways, so um, I'm gonna go from the top of my head, no script or anything. My first piece of advice would be to um, try to find your own niche. 
The best way to do this is probably to just fill up a list with your favorite games, games that you can put a lot of hours into. Just start grinding videos on those games and then as time goes by you're gonna see what games and what videos are performing the best. And then you can go from there. And um, my second pedo... pedo? What? Pedo? Really? My second piece of advice would be to... As you're editing or... As you're editing... my. When you're watching your own videos or editing, try to really see it from the viewer's perspective. It's so important to understand what they want. And also be quite hard on yourself. Don't just tell yourself that every single video you make is good, because it's probably not. And I can confirm that because like 90% of my videos are trash. But anyways, back to the point. Yeah. I um just forgot what the point was. My third piece of advice kind of goes together with these two. Community comes to play. Community is the most important aspect of all of this. Basically you want to get to the point where you can record yourself taking a huge dump and people will still watch it. Like uh, jokes aside, it's actually true. And um, yeah, that's all I can think of really. Other than that we have the generic advice, be yourself, have fun and also real quick, don't be scared to clickbait. If you, if you want to make this a, as a career, you have to clickbait. If you don't clickbait, it's already over before you even begun. So uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out. I hope you enjoyed professional advice. I think you summed up the exact difference between our content there, buddy, but it shows that you don't have to be rigid and stick solely to a script to be entertaining. I love the content that all three of these guys make, but they all have completely different styles. I think if there was one thing that I would like new and aspiring YouTubers to take away from this video is that no one else can make your content. Now what I mean by that is it doesn't matter what game you're making videos on or whether you make video on a super popular trending topic. The main thing that will cause people to click that big shiny subscribe button is you. A great example of this is like with Get Good Guy here. I no longer play Battlefield 5 or to be honest have much interest in it. However, I still watch every single video that this guy makes because I like his style as a creator. So just remember that the best thing that you can do with your videos is to make your personality shine through. Unless of course you're just a really boring dickhead or something and then maybe you should just stick to TikTok. Anyway, that about sums it up for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'd like to say a massive thank you to Get Good Guy, Jaws Gaming, and Fabian Chills. All of their channels will be linked down below. If you've watched a few of my videos, then you will know that I like to see who sticks around until the end. So, if you've made it this far, then I'd love it if you'd answer the question down below. What is your ultimate favourite YouTuber of all time? That's about it from me today. I'm Average Joel. Peace.